Welcome to Monday, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and I hope you all had a great weekend. Weekends now, you know, I'll be honest, they're boring. Nothing to do. So uh, my wife and I, uh, we sat at home again. And uh, thinking about Eric, please continue to have Eric in your in your thoughts, in your prayers. Um, the coronavirus uh, ran through the office down here in Phoenix. Uh, I was in the hospital. Eric's been in the hospital. Uh, I'm feeling much better, uh, thankfully. And hopefully we'll get Eric there soon. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, you know, you start thinking about, and of course, you know, this is what I do. I just, I just think about all this stuff and, and it really is, it's dangerous because my mind just doesn't stop, you know? So like last night, I I didn't sleep very well last night because all these things are in my head and I'm watching, you know, I'm trying not to watch the television, but it's hard because, you know, you see all these. I don't even know what the, the, you know, they call them protesters. They're not protesters. Uh, the looters and the rioters, the people that want to hurt other people. And uh, I, I, it sickens me to the core. It really does. I mean, this is not what we need. Um, and, I, and I watch um, uh, some of our elected officials side with these individuals, these lawbreakers. And it, it baffles me, right? It blows my mind because you're hurting business, period. You you got a city under siege. Businesses are being hurt. And most of the businesses in this country are still small business. They don't, you don't hear about it when you watch. If you watch the stock channels, you don't know about it. But I've been telling you, you know, 30 to 40% of all small businesses won't reopen. And I'm starting to wonder if that number is too low. Uh, obviously got a huge rally in gold and silver gold at new all-time record highs this morning. Uh, we had a, we've got a $40 move going on in the gold markets, the silver markets. Silver's up another dollar and a half, uh, approaching $25 to the ounce this morning. Uh, we had an ugly auction this morning. The largest two-year note auction in the history of the world happened this morning we got a lot of ground to cover i'm going to try to keep you all educated 800-951-0592 that is our toll-free number the website at allamericangold.com and thank you so much to all you podcasters your youtubers uh you facebookers wherever you make sure your friend to subscribe to us like us do all those things uh by the way go out to 1360khnc.com uh, we we revised our podcast page. I think we made it a lot more simple uh, for everybody out there. Got a new uh, podcast page as, as that has become more and more popular. And so proud. A lot of great new shows, too, especially on the weekends uh, on 1360KHNC.com. Got some young blood breathing some new life into the weekend. So make sure you catch those. Uh, their podcasts are up there as well. But... Uh, we, we talked last week about the dollar, and, and I try to keep it simple, right? And, and, you know, I always say this, you know, God's got a sense of humor, right? If you didn't buy because you're waiting for a pullback, right, of course gold's going to go up. And I promise you, the second you buy gold, that, that, it's going to fall. It just will. That's just, that's just how it works. But we are dangerously close to entering the, and these are long-running cycles, right? Seven to ten-year cycles that have been running since the 80s, right? Ever since we left the gold standard officially. You know, us as citizens, we were forced out of the gold standard in 1933. Richard Nixon forced the rest of the world out of the gold standard in 1971. And I say Richard Nixon, I mean, he was just the president at the time, right? It wasn't. It was the bankers, right? And, and, and of course, every one of these bankers, and I'm talking about the, the Volkers and the Greenspans, the Bernackis, the Yellens, the Jay Powells of the world, the J.B. Diamonds of the world. They all know. All fiat money goes to zero, always. 
I mean, it's been that way for almost a 1,000 years now. That's about how long fiat money's existed. By the way, it's kind of ironic. You know, the first country to create fiat money was the Chinese. Right, and now they're getting ready, right, with the big battle, right? They're closing consulates, we're closing consulates, right, all this other back and forth. They signed a trade deal that they had no intentions of ever keeping. And now there's, there's worry about the dollar. Today, as an example, uh, the dollar today is at 93.67 been as low as 93.47 remember 92.80 is where I told you that's kind of where we we get ready to start the next cycle down and and we know this in these cycles with the dollar we hit high lower highs and lower lows and it's been that way since the 80s so this is a just a clear pattern and it's not a straight line right of course not but when you start looking at our finances, it's so simple, right? You start looking at debts, you start looking at interest rates, you start looking at the central bank, and eventually you're like, whoa, wait a minute. The ultimate hedge against the fiat currency of your nation has always been gold. That's why gold's at record highs in every major country in the world. Major Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800-951-0592. Uh, well, you know how they, 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 what they say about a nation divided, right? It cannot stand. And there is no doubt we are divided, and it just feels like the socialists are winning. And it scares the you-know-what out of me. You know, when you, when you think about, you know, the United States, we, were, we became a superpower because we rewarded success. That's what the country did. We had a middle class that was the envy of the entire world. Now we talk about 40 million people being on food stamps. I don't know if you saw it. Did you see the the lines at the at the food pantries? They're back. Have you noticed? Probably haven't, but believe me, they're back. The end of the benefit. Uh, this is now in effect. No more big checks. Uh, the Republicans over the weekend presented their plan. They want to offer seventy percent of. Your, your wages if you're on if you're collecting unemployment so before you were getting whatever your state would grant you okay so depending on on, on how much money you made in all, every state they have a maximum benefit in Arizona it's only two hundred forty dollars uh, we'd be one of the states most affected by not getting this extra six hundred bucks because for a lot of people in Arizona the extra $600 a week was more than what they were making. Right? Which seems that's not right. But again, you can see how far socially we've gone, right? We want to just, here, let's give everybody a check. And, and, and obviously, uh, I've been a huge, huge non-supporter of the president and, and really of the, of the media who's forced this whole entire country to shut down, it's just a huge mistake. I mean, we've got to live with it. Is, is, is COVID real? I can tell you, first of all, it is. It's real. I had it. I was in the hospital. I almost died. Eric's hanging on for dear life. But you don't shut the country down. You don't shut down employment. I, I, I have a list. I don't even know if I'm going to do it. To, it's too... It's too uh, it's it's too negative even for me of all the all the businesses shutting down permanently now saying you know what that's it we're done we're not reopening uh, I see these states they've got list uh, twenty seven states where if you fly into 
uh, New York or, or one of these other places, you got to uh, quarantine for two weeks. So half the country, you fly into New York or the Pennsylvania or wherever it may be, and you just, okay, well, I'm not going because, you know, I'm not going to quarantine for two weeks. And you think about all the, all the madness that that would represent, and all these states are doing it. It's crazy. So now the Republicans are saying we want to give you 70% of your pay. So let's just keep it simple. If you were making $1,000 a week, you lost your job. You file for unemployment. Whatever the state gives you, okay, so whether it's $200, $300, $500, the federal government will will, will move you up to 70% of your pay. So if... Whatever you're getting from the state doesn't equal 70%. They're going to make it 70%. But that's it. So this is, a, in, in, in fact, a massive, what? It's a massive pay cut for 32 million Americans. And I know the number, right? They'll say it's only 16 million. But, of course, I, I told you last week, I did the show last week about unemployment. Right? The, the unemployment report the first two paragraphs gives you the number. Since the federal government created a loophole to allow for 1099, remember I've been telling you for years, 1099 employees don't get to file unemployment claims. That's why small business, or small business, that's why big business loves hiring 1099s. You don't have to pay unemployment insurance. You don't have to pay work versus comp. You don't have to pay the payroll tax. You don't have to pay anything. When you factor in the 1099 people that are now been allowed to file unemployment, the number goes from 16 million to 32 million. It's just that simple. It's double. That puts the unemployment rate about 20 percent. And you start really, and people don't really understand how huge that is. These are worse than the Great Depression numbers. And, you know, we sit there, and if you ever see, uh, there is a big headline talking about auto loans and personal loans. Forget about mortgages and, and credit cards. Delinquency rates are now above 7%. That's massive. You know, 7%, you're like, oh, well, you know, that's still 93% of the people paying. You know, 93%, that's still an A. You know, if you're in school, it doesn't work that way with loans. Banks don't have 7% set aside. By the way, the moratorium for evictions is over. That's in this bill with the Republicans as well. They want to extend that because they know. See, here's the thing. They know if we don't have that in there, I mean, we could have 30 million people get evicted overnight. But all of this has to be done before Friday. It's not, I don't see it happening. I mean, the Democrats want $3 trillion. Oh, by the way, the other thing is, the other big piece, so 70% of your pay, continue on the eviction moratorium. Think about this if you were, you know, my brother as an example. Uh, him and, and a couple of his buddies went in. They, they own um, some duplexes, uh, small apartment buildings. They, they own about... 40 different rental properties and there are there are small apartment buildings not that many but right now if someone is is renting one of his places can't pay that he can't evict him he can't get the money for it right and you start thinking about you know a lot of these a lot of people out there right hey that's hey i got rental properties because of income because you know you look at uh what interest rates are doing there's no returns you can't buy bonds Right, look at, I'll get to this two year old note here in a minute. Right, so a lot of people have been going into real estate, right, saying, hey, well, you know what, I'll just rent to try to make some income. Now, all of a sudden, none of these people can evict them, so that's in there. And then the last piece is the $1,200 check deal. They want to do that again. Uh, and again, I mean, I got one. I don't need one. And a lot of people don't, and and it's a waste of money, uh, and I don't understand it. Well, I do, because this is how serious the problem is. And believe me, the rest of the world is paying attention. Look at what the dollar's doing. 
I've been talking about the dollar since I got back. And, and you're watching it systematically break down this morning. We had the largest two-year note auction in the history of the world. Uh, I want to say, what was it? Almost $50 billion. $48 billion of two-year notes. Now, two-year notes, this is one of the more popular notes because it allows uh, countries with their sovereign wealth funds they can put these away knowing, hey, in a couple of years, right, I need to buy oil, I need to buy this, I need to buy that, right? But it's not 10 years, it's not 20, 30 years, right? But it's just a couple of years and I can hang out and get a little bit of interest. Here's the problem now. The two-year note this morning, one of the ugliest auctions we've seen in a long time, uh, yielded out at point one four six. Now, when you factor in inflation, and let's use the central bank's inflation, right? We know that that's a uh, a lie. But right now, the central bank is saying inflation is running at just below two percent, right? One eight, one nine, one seven. Right, something in there. If you're only getting 0.14, and the inflation rate, let's just use just just because we got to pick a number, let's use 1.8. That means you're losing 1.66 percent after inflation. And you're sitting there and you're starting to think, wait a minute, why would anybody buy a two-year note? Now you factor in the dollar losing value on top of it. Because you got to remember now, now if you're here in the U.S., maybe you make up if you're local. Right? Well, the dollar's losing value and, and I'm holding it and, and so uh, maybe I can somehow come out of this okay maybe we don't know possible but if you're a foreign government you're like wait a minute now it's buying me even less I, I put a billion dollars maybe I bought a billion dollars and two years from now the dollar buys even less for me right the dollar keeps losing value I need more dollars to buy that barrel of oil. I need more dollars to buy the soybeans or to buy the corn or to buy the wheat or whatever it is that they want to buy. On top of the inflation, now you're losing even more money. And this is the problem. Uh, the bid to cover uh, the worst we've seen in years, uh, on a, especially on a two-year note, uh, two, three, four, uh, just to put perspective on it, in April, the bid to cover ratio was about three. In other words, they'd have an auction, $48 billion, they'd have bids three times that. And they, the government takes the best one. One of the few things I guess they do right is the government, everybody submits a bid. Hey, I'll buy a billion dollars of paper, but I want this much interest. And we, we take the bids that want, what, the lowest amount. I mean, that does make sense. But now we're seeing that people aren't showing up. The, the indirect bidding was only 45%. Now, the indirects, those are your foreign governments. These are your foreign uh, wealth funds, things of that nature. Uh, this is something that normally they're well above 50. Well above 50. Now they're only at 45%. Uh, by the way, that's the worst number since in over a year the directs were taking 14.8 which is in line the dealers <laughs> this is kind of part of the problem with the office. the dealers were stuck with almost 40 percent of the 48 billion dollars now what are the dealers going to do they're going to turn it all over to the fed right so so they have a way out uh that they didn't have in the past but but you're starting to see my point the demand for dollars is falling. And the reason is 
They're looking at deficits. Look at we're we're going to add. We don't know what the number is. Is it going to be a trillion, three trillion, somewhere in the middle? On top of, we're already at almost twenty-seven trillion in counting. And you start thinking about what the real unemployment rate is. You start looking at this recovery. Everybody was hoping for the V. The V's dead. The, v, the V's dead. It's gone. And now we're starting to see the aftermath of all the closures. I, I saw another uh, retailer. I didn't even know, actually, uh, I want to say it was Catherine's. They're uh, a plus-size retailer. They had 320 stores all online. They closed them all. And you're start, You're going to see more and more and more. I think we're above 8,000 retail closures. I can't even tell you the bars and the restaurants that aren't going to reopen. It's incredible to think, but this is it. This is why you need to prepare. I know it's kind of doom and gloom and ugly, but it's also the reality. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report. A daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a national volunteer organization founded by Phyllis Schlafly and continuing to uphold her legacy by opposing radical feminism and representing a traditional conservative perspective in our nation's capital. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Peaceful protest is a cornerstone of American society. If you don't like something in America, you have the right to say so publicly as long as you aren't infringing on the rights of others. The many peaceful protesters you'll find outside abortion mills are an excellent example of this great American institution at work. Thousands of passionate pro-life Americans gather outside abortion centers to pray, protest, and offer alternatives to desperate women. I'm so thankful for the courageous acts of these patriots and leaders. However, the people who oppose these pro-lifers are not as admirable. In fact, many are openly violent to those who want to support life. At one facility in Illinois, two groups hurled eggs at young pro-lifers peacefully kneeling in prayer. The police are investigating this incident, but there are countless others like it that are never investigated. Pro-choicers have been known to destroy personal property, not to mention punching and spitting on people they disagree with. Vulgar language and intimidation are common. These aren't just isolated cases with a few extremists. The hatred of pro-choice counter-protesters is widespread and it's dangerous. In some areas, expressing pro-life views is tantamount to taking your safety in your own hands. If we're going to preserve the noble right to protest in America, we have to reopen the dialogue that's been closed for so long. Pro-lifers aren't afraid of the dialogue. We know science is on our side. We know righteousness is on our side too. It's the pro-choicers who want to shut down dialogue. They lash out with violence and vitriol because they know they can't win a fair debate. If you're a pro-life activist, you should be applauded for fighting so hard for the cause of righteousness. More than this, you should be encouraged that your fight is not in vain. When you are attacked while standing up for your convictions, you reveal the weakness of the pro-choice belief system. And you let other Americans who are on the fence see how pro-choicers actually act. Keep standing tall for the unborn. You're standing on the bedrock of our republic. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Despite the outrageous pro-abortion stance of many liberals, the vast majority of American people value human life. More than ever, pro-life voices need to stay vigilant and be heard. At phyllisschlafly.com, we're not backing down. Please, join us in the battle for life at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. I don't know if you saw it, Major League Baseball's back, playing with no fans. NBA, playing with no fans. I think NHL's going to play with no fans today. Uh, Not a great start. Uh, Two games have been canceled today. Uh, The Marlins, the Miami Marlins. It used to be the Florida Marlins, but now they're the Miami Marlins. Fourteen players tested positive uh, over the weekend. They were playing the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, 14 players, I think a couple of them were coaches, but mostly players tested positive, and now they've postponed their series against the uh, the Orioles. And then the Yankees were supposed to play the Phillies. That game has been postponed as well as everybody's getting tested. And, uh, and you start thinking about, again, the the nature of this thing. You know, I don't think you can take more precautions. 
than what these pro sports teams have done, and it still happens. And, and again, I, 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 I'm, I'm not for it. I'm, I'm more of the, you know what, we've got to, we've got to do the best we can and improve. You know, in, and I've said it a bunch of times. It's all about the treatment. That's where we need to be focused. Uh, I don't think you can prevent it. I mean, look at what they've done. They've isolated these people. They got in the bubble, and nobody, nobody leaves, and nobody goes, and no, no, no wives can come, no kids can come. I mean, all this stuff. Uh, an NBA player had to leave the bubble for something happened at home, and he had, I think it was a funeral. He went to a club. The NBA found out now the guy's got to quarantine for 10 more days because, hey, you know what, you're not allowed to go into contact with other people. And, and it's still, you're still seeing them come down with it. it and, uh, and I think this is part of the, the issue, right? It's going to happen. I don't know, know that, uh, you know, it would be great if everyone wore a mask and all that stuff. Doesn't stop it may make it harder, may, and I say may because I don't know. But it, 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 it happens no matter what. I mean, this is, this is something that I don't think a lot of people are, are understanding, and, and the social media and the media itself has, has everybody so worked up about uh, all of these things that it's, it's just hard because at the end of the day, people got to earn a living. And already, you know, the government is here to help us, right? Oh, yeah, they're here to help. And look at, they, they paid everybody an extra 600 bucks for a little while. Here's the thing, though. The Federal Reserve, they're still buying all the corporate debt. Right? You want to know why Wall Street's so overvalued? It's the, the central bank. They're buying it all. They're buying corporate debt. They're buying... Uh, our own, the U.S. debt, they're buying mortgage debt, auto loan debt, they're buying it all, company debt, and putting it on their balance sheet, trying to pretend everything's A-OK when it's not. But here's the thing. They'll always bail out Wall Street. They won't bail us out. It's already started. 600 bucks is gone. Right? How about we give you... 70% of your pay. How many of you out there could take a 30% pay cut and still pay your bills? How many? Right? Most Americans, you know, because let's face it, we are not the, the, the smartest, most educated financially. Because if we were, right, all my phones would be ringing 24 hours a day. Instead, they want to continue to give you the illusion that somehow you could be a millionaire. If you just just go and get a 401k and put all this money into it, here's the reality. The reality is we should have hundreds, we should have millions, tens of millions of millionaires, but we don't. Right? We've got 401k balance. Even the average is only $90,000. That's it. Could you imagine having to spread out 90 grand over 20 years? Well, let's hope you don't live longer than that. Right? That's like $4,500 a year. What are you going to do with 4500 bucks? Nothing. I mean, that's not even a vacation. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't go anywhere anyway, but you know what I mean. It doesn't work. Not for, not for the majority. A small few. Small few. And, and now we're sitting there and we're saying, okay, you can't go to work, right? All the bars are closed. The movie theaters are closed. This is closed. That's closed. Dining capacities, you know, are at 50%, whatever they may be. And they took care of you for about three months. And now they're like, hey, we can't do it anymore. And I agree. We, and here's the reality. We can't. What we need to do is put everybody back to work. It just isn't going to happen. 
This is why you get auctions like we saw this morning. This is why you see the dollar like you saw this morning. Because all of a sudden, when the tide goes out, you realize how many people don't have any clothes on. And that's what this country is facing. And, and really, when you sit there and you start looking at it from every historical perspective, this is the worst the country has ever been economically. We have more people not paying their mortgage than ever before. That includes the housing crisis. More people not paying the rent than ever before. More people not paying their auto loans. More people not paying their credit cards. Yet you just had all these banks announce earnings and they were fantastic. Look at all the revenue we made from Wall Street. Of course, no one was telling you about their loan loss reserves, were they? And, and then you start looking at, we got 32 million people that are getting ready to take a massive pay cut, right, because of the unemployment. Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't get done by Friday, next week, you only get what the state allows. So for Arizona, it's $240. So you went from making eight forty sitting at home to making two forty sitting at home. Now, if you listen to the idiot box, they'll tell you, "Well, there's jobs out there for these people, right? They're they're just not coming back to work because they're making more money sitting at home." A couple people, not that many. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this shakes out. But right now, I, I don't know how you get out. Right outside of whatever, you know, open it back up and we got to live with it. But that just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome back. Patriot Radio News Hour. And, I, I, you know, there are some great things on the Internet. Someone actually, and I, w- I would love to give credit, but I can't find out who it was. But they're saying that, so what is 70% compared to $600? Apparently, the first number is 200 So most people now, if and if this passed, and, and of course, I don't know that it will, right? But this is the, the Republican offer. And listen, it's got to get done this week. Or next week, you get nothing. And I think that's what's going to happen. That's my fear. And this is why the food bank lines are all back. But it'll be a $400 a week pay cut. So in Arizona, um, the average person will get 240 from the state plus an extra 200 from the feds. So they'll go from $840 a week to $440 a week. Yeah, ouch. But uh, that appears to be, uh, anyway, what, what that works out to. So paying 70% of your wages uh, would, would amount to roughly about 200 extra dollars a week uh, versus uh, the, that extra 600. And here's the realities. I mean, what would a fair would have been, hey, whatever you were making, we, we'll honor that. Since the government forced the shutdown. And again, but they don't care about us. They say they do, but here's the realities. The realities are all the cruise lines are still in business. They should be out of business, but they're bailed out by the government. right? The airlines, bailed out by the government. By the way, the airlines, I won't even tell you about the. You've seen it. You know what's going to happen come October 1. A couple hundred thousand airline employees will be gone. But all of the debt that the central banks are buying and adding to their balance sheet, you know, the balance sheet's over $7 trillion now. I mean, remember just a year ago they were talking about, oh, yeah, we're, we're reducing the balance sheet. <laughs> and now it's, now it's almost doubled, not quite doubled, almost, almost doubled from where it was. 
Right? We got down to just under $4 trillion, and now we're back above $7 trillion on our way to eight, nine, ten. Who knows? Where does it stop? And this is why you're seeing the dollar under pressure, right? Because you're starting to see, wait a minute, what, what's happening? Now, now China and the United States, were back at it. Remember that trade agreement? Where is it? Right? China had no intentions of honor. We knew that. I mean, how many more times until we realize that these guys truly are our enemy? Now, you know the old saying, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer? I guess maybe that could apply. But I've got a feeling the Chinese, they're a little too close. And it's going to be just, it's another another thing you need to factor. We're, we're going to have a tough time coming out of this. Right? The, the V-shaped recovery is dead. We've got to deal with the unemployed. Right now, the unemployed are going to take a massive pay cut. And, and it's one thing if it was a couple million people. But we're talking 32 million plus. I mean, unemployment claims, 1.4 million just last week. The numbers are growing again. And then you start looking at the deficits, and you look, you start seeing the math. You look at a uh, two-year auction, the largest ever, right, $48 billion in a single day, just on two years. And we auction other stuff today. Don't, don't, it's not like, I mean, this is a daily occurrence. $100 billion a day, sometimes more, every single day, day in, day out. And in one year, we're going to add, what, five or six trillion? And I say, oh, well, it's a good time to borrow because rates are so low, right? We, 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 don't, we don't hardly have to pay anything. Well, that makes sense if we were going to pay it off, right? They're not going to be low for That's the thing I worry about. All these low rates, I mean, how low can they, I mean, we go negative. We're already technically negative when you factor in inflation, even as low as it is. There's not a note out there. Ten-year note's only paying 0.59. Technically, all of our notes are, even the 30-year, 30 30-year's 30 not paying 1.8. They're not worth it. And this is kind of the big problem. And, I, and again, I, I don't know where the dollar cycle goes, but I've got a pretty good guess. Got a pretty good guess. I mean, I, I think we'll probably be something, you know, dollar index in the 60s. At that point, do interest rates, can we can we offer rates of zero? Or are people going to say, hey, no way, you know what, I need, I need one, just 1%. I need 1% instead of 0.14 on this two-year note. And matter of fact, 1% on everything. That adds almost half a trillion dollars to the deficit in a year. Just 1%. Because it's gotten so big. It used to add $250 billion. Back when the deficit was like 10, 12 billion, or 10 or 12 trillion. Right now it's going to be like 30 trillion. Half a billion. Half a trillion, I'm sorry, not half a billion, half a trillion. What if they want 2%? Heaven forbid they want three. Patriot Radio News Hour. How much gold do you have? Final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. Uh, the Dow is up 90. Uh, how, what, I don't know. Uh, the S&P, the NASDAQ, everything's up today except for crude oil. Uh, gold is up $33, $34 right now, nineteen thirty-one. dollars Gold's been between nineteen thirty and nineteen forty all day. Here's the thing. Soon. Now, am I, am I talking about tomorrow? No. But in the next 
three to five years, don't be surprised when there's another zero. Right? Not up $32, $33, $34, but it's up $320, $330, $340. I think that's that's what we've got to look forward to. Uh, Silver up a dollar sixty twenty four forty. So uh, what happened to twenty three? It's gone. Uh, silver bumping up. Matter of fact, uh, bumping up right on uh, you know twenty four and a half dollars right now in rising for silver. Uh, remember uh, the other day I said yeah twenty five's in the bag. Uh, don't be surprised if we see thirty dollars silver uh, before the year is over. I think gold's going to end the year somewhere north of twenty. 500 bucks today and beggars can't be choosers it's what's the only thing out there i mean gold is turning into silver it's getting harder and harder to get uh i do have some ten dollar liberties i had 75 of them but they've already been selling we're down we only got 47 left these are the ten dollar liberties these are the old ones 1866 to 1907 uh, these are the ones we recommend because you can buy them, sell them, trade them. You don't have to worry about 1099s. Uh, they are considered a collectible. Remember the last time the government confiscated gold, the only gold coins you could keep were collectibles. And they had the red books back then. They were actually blue. The blue book, which is now the red book. They had them in the in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, right? So the collectors could see what their coins were doing. Those were the only coins you could keep during the last gold confiscation. So uh, will it be this time around? I don't know. Do I think one's coming? I do because I think in order for the United States to compete uh, with, with the new digital currency, it's going to have to be backed by gold. That's just what I think. I think the Chinese are going to do it. I think this is where we're headed um, and, and it's one of those things where uh, when you when you go trillions and tens of trillions and you know hundreds of trillions of dollars into debt, right? The rest of the world isn't so eager to loan you money again, and you're going to have to do something to get their confidence. And the only thing I can think of is gold. But U.S. ten dollar liberties they're now a thousand and eighty five dollars a piece. There's only forty seven less, but it, it, it's still it, the value is tremendous. It's still $35 less than a 20 today. Take advantage of it. Put them away. I know a lot of us, we want a pullback, right? Somewhere there's got to be a pullback. Eventually there will be. Eventually there will be. But right now I think that, you know, even a pullback here, I think 1900, you know, probably that 1902, the previous all-time high, uh, you build a base there if there's going to be one, but you just don't know. And, and we don't know how long a pullback will last. Sometimes a pull, these pullbacks in these bull markets don't even make it through a day. 800-951-0592. Forget about pullbacks. You know where gold's headed long term. Take the time. Put them away. We got 47 $10 liberties at $1,085. Everybody take care. I'll be back tomorrow. Talk to you.